Good morning. I want to welcome you to Zion Lutheran Church in Wallingford as we gather for this service on the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, in today's service, uh, we will include a children's object lesson, which I haven't done in a long, long time. It'll be good to see children up here again. With that in mind, please open to your bulletin to the insert uh, for the worship service for today. Let us rise. O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Grant us so firmly to believe in your Son, Jesus, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Daniel, Daniel chapter 12. <laughs> okay. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never had been seen since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 10. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. The Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, 
I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And at this time, I would like to invite children to come forward, and you may be seated. I have a little table here, and it's based upon the words of our text in Mark, where they say, look, teacher, what wonderful stones, what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. So I got a deck of cards here. You know, and you can use them to play so many different games. You like to play games? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is an old-fashioned game, you know, with, with cards. There's so many things you can do. But one thing you can do with cards is you can build I'm going to try to build something. You can do it for me? Uh, you know what? I'm just trying it. Maybe you ought to give me a hand. How high can you go? Yeah. You just lean them against. Oh, the fell. It fell. You know what? I'm going to try it again. Why did it fall? I know, but I have a carpet here. I think 
Yeah, I'm trying. Let's see what happens. I'm trying to be careful. Uh-oh, it's going to fall again. Just a little bit of movement can wreck it. Uh-oh. Okay, okay, let's see what I can do. You know, this reminds me of the gospel lesson because the disciples were looking at how great the temple was. I did it so far, but I got more to do. And, and they were saying, wow, this is phenomenal. The building is so wonderful. Look at those great big stones and everything. And Jesus said, you know what? It's all going to be coming down. It's all going to be coming down because the temple was only there when Jesus was no longer around. The temple is not needed because of Jesus. Jesus is God's temple on earth. Oh, do you think I can go higher? You want to see if I can do it? Bear with me. <coughs> Put that on top, please. Okay, right there. Well, it almost, it doesn't want to stay. You know what? But that reminds me of what Jesus said about the temple. You know what he said? It's all coming down. There we go, part of it. But you know what does not fall down? You know what does not fall down? A life that is built on Jesus. A life that is built on Jesus will never collapse. Because Jesus, if we build our lives on Jesus, we build it on a rock. We build it on a place that will not crumble. That's why it's so good to grow up, keep your faith in Jesus. Don't ever lose your faith in Jesus because he's, oh, it all fell down. You know what? After church, I'm going to have this out there. After church, you can try to build something, okay? Well, let's do it after church. I want to thank you so much for coming up. So build your life on Jesus. It won't fall apart like this one. Oh, thank you. That's beautiful. You can go back to your seats. Yeah. Hi, Gracie. We continue by rising to profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The words of our text are recorded in Hebrews chapter 10, especially the verse that says, For by a single offering, he, Jesus, has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. So far the text. You know, it's not a new thing to understand that we live in a broken world. Things break. You know, when, when my kids were young, uh, a toy broke or something like that, and I knew just how to fix it. It was called super glue. Yeah. Some things you fix with duct tape, but this was super glue, and, and I had the super glue out, and in my, well, zeal to fix the toy, I ended up gluing my fingers together. Well, the solution for that to unstick them was fingernail nail remover stuff, you know? So, Sally, do you have any fingernail polish remover? No. So I drove to what was at the time in Wallingford, a place called Kmart. They had everything. And I found the solution that you could buy specifically to remove the uh, glue, super glue, from whatever, like fingers. But I kept my hand in my pocket. <laughs> I didn't want anyone to know. And when I went up to the cashier, this was before self-checkout. I would have done a self-checkout if they had it. I just had that feeling the cashier was stifling laughter, thinking, yeah, he glued his fingers together. You see, what was broken got fixed, but now something else got broken. I mean, if your car is broken, you want to find a good mechanic who can fix it. If you have problems with certain things in your home, you need to call a plumber. And I've known people that when the plumber arrives, they are so grateful. When something in your house that's electrical has a problem, boy, do you want to find that electrician who knows just how to fix things like that. You don't want a novice to do it. It's too dangerous. And if your body is broken, you want to find a doctor who has the know-how to deal with your affliction and hopefully to, to make you better. And when you look at our society, there is so much broken all over the world. Whether it's in politics or just social things, and there's something else that reflects that brokenness, and that is the brokenness we have before God. Whether we, you like to admit it, we are broken people spiritually because of sin. And that sin has caused such an impact on our lives. And that's why we need God to help fix it. You know, some people think they can fix it themselves. You can't fix your relationship with God yourself. You need an outside source. You know, in the Old Testament, God set up an outside source back in Leviticus for the work and the sacrifices of the priests. And they would offer all kinds of different sacrifices for all kinds of different problems and brokenness. And, and they would do that. And the atonement was a, a big holiday in the Jewish faith where the priests would also be offering up sacrifices for the forgiveness of sins, to, to restore people. And they did that every year. And part of the Jewish aspect was the priests offering up daily sacrifices over and over again. But the writer of, of the book of Hebrews says something interesting about that. He says, he says, every priest stands daily at his service offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. That's like going to a mechanic to get your car fixed and it never gets to be fixed. You have to keep going back and back and back and back, and they just can't do it. They have lemon laws about certain things if you buy a car and has that, they have that kind of problem. And, but the priests you know, offered up sacrifices. But then the writer of Hebrews compares that to Jesus. And what does Jesus do? The writer says, When Christ had offered for all time, a single sacrifice for sins, 
he sat down at the right hand of God. You see, Jesus, one sacrifice did it all. The Old Testament sacrifices were like, like a picture of the true one yet to come. John the Baptist referred to Jesus as the Lamb of God, who does what? Who takes away the sin of the world. By the sacrifice of Christ, our broken lives spiritually are fixed and repaired. And how we need it. There's a, a writer named Richard Lisher. He wrote a book, and in it he talked about a woman named Terry who had a unique ability to break into this one church. She didn't break in to steal anything. She broke in really to, to pray. And the reason why she didn't come during you know, the hours where people would be there is because of how the people treated her mother and her family. Years before, her mother became pregnant out of wedlock. And, and the person that got her pregnant was the son of a very prominent family. And those church people were willing to sacrifice Terry's mother and family to protect the prominent family. And so they, they were never welcome at that church anymore. And instead of finding a church, they went without. Well, years later, Terry grew up. Her mother had died. But then Terry was found in another pretty difficult situation when she was pregnant out of wedlock. And this time, it wasn't the church that gave her any problems because she wasn't going. Her stepfather became very abusive to her. She had no place to go. And she was experiencing so much brokenness. So she learned how to break into church. And she would go there sometimes at midnight where she would sit in the church and pray. And one night, Richard Lisher found Terry sitting in the chancel in this chair that the pastor would sit in. And she was up there praying. And what was fascinating is Terry understood that God was present in that church. He understood that God could fix her brokenness, which was massive. She went there for peace went there to be reunited with God, went there to find Christ who can restore any broken life once again with God. She got it right. She understood. And we need to remember that too. You know, Jesus, he did it once, one sacrifice. That's all it took. He is considered a prophet, a priest, and a king. And as a priest, he offers up a living sacrifice to God. But the sacrifice he offers is himself, his own body on that cross, to shed his blood for the sins of the world. And he accomplished that purpose when he went to that cross. And anyone who struggles with sin who finds their life and relationship with God broken because of sin, can find it restored, redeemed in Christ, brought back to God. And we need that. And not just with our relationship with God, but with others. The writer to the Hebrews encourages people not to forsake the assembling of one another, but to do it all the more as we see that final day approaching. You know, we need each other. We need to be here to, to show the power of God's forgiveness in Christ. We need each other to remind us of, of what Jesus Christ has done for not just you as an individual, but we as a collective body of Christ. We need each other to pray for one another, to build each other up in the body of Christ. Because Jesus has taught us to pray, not my Father in heaven, but our Father in heaven. And to live our lives in the body of Christ together, which is a wonderful place to be. And when we come together in this place, 
we are in the presence of Jesus. The one who offered up one sacrifice, that, that's all it took for him, one sacrifice to deal with the sins of the world, to deal with our brokenness, and to bring us back to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. The altar flowers for today are given by Debbie Kahn in honor of Sophie's and Debbie's birthday and the 30th wedding anniversary. And the eternal light is lit by Margaret Pizal in memory of Michael Daly. Also in our prayers, we remember those under the doctor's care for Tammy and Kaylee, Kathy, Tim Yaden, and Richard. Corinne Leary requested prayers to please continue to keep the extended Meadows family in prayer, especially as they prepare for the celebration of life this afternoon for their loved one, Joe, who passed away. Uh, Sue Cosgrove requested a prayer for Sal, the father-in-law of David Cosgrove. Sal is having back surgery on Tuesday. And Janice Geller requested prayers for herself. She was in a, a car accident. Her car was totaled. She has great pain from a broken elbow. But fortunately, she does not need surgery. Sue Brady requested prayers for Russ in rehab, recovering from hip surgery. Prayers also for healing and strength for Ann, David, Dennis, Joe, Terry, and David. Judy Robinson requested prayers for her son-in-law, Fred, who has stage four lung cancer and is right now having a very difficult time. Karen Persinowski requested more prayers for Haiti and the captured missionaries. And now a pastor was shot, his child killed while they were in a car. And there are no police at this point. And a prayer to remember John Macri, who died in March, by his daughter, Kimberly, and her fiancé, Kionis. Let us rise as we continue with the versicles in your bulletin. Hear my prayer, O Lord. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you. Hide your face from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Because your steadfast love is better than life. For you have been my help. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart. May all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Save your people and bless your heritage. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Behold the sick and infirm, the dying and all in need, especially those under the care of doctors, as well as those who mourn. Today we lift up to you, O Lord, Tammy and Kaylee, Kathy and Tim, Richard, Sal, Janice, Russ, Ann, David, Dennis, Joe, Terry, and David, and Fred. And for those who mourn, especially the Meadows family and friends as they gather this afternoon, and the family and friends of John Macri. Grant them healing of body and patience to endure their afflictions, comfort in their sorrow. And Lord, we pray for the missionaries in Haiti and all who are impacted by the violence and lack of order. Raise up people to help secure the safety of all. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Have a wonderful week.